brothers and sisters, welcome. Father Frank Pavone here, National Director of Priests for Life. Thanks for joining me on Praying for America. We look forward to uh, praying with you during this time. And also, we want to look at the 2022 midterms. The history is not on the side of the Democrat Party. And we're going to delve into that. I mean, it's commonly understood, uh, especially among uh, the, the, those of you that follow politics, that in the midterm elections, the president's party uh, loses uh, power in Congress. And uh, we're going to delve deeper into that, both with numbers and with possible reasons. And I want to thank uh, right up front the uh, Cook uh, political report. Uh, I've, I've, I've recommended that to you before, cookpolitical.com. Uh, and that's where I get my uh, information on things like this for the most part. Uh, and they've had some very good articles about this topic. But first, let's turn to the Word of God. I want to read from Proverbs chapter 10 here, uh, starting in verse 17. A path to life is his who heeds admonition, but he who disregards reproof goes astray. It is the lips of the liar that conceal hostility, but he who spreads accusations is a fool. Where words are many, Sin is not wanting, but he who restrains his lips does well. Like choice silver is the just man's tongue. The heart of the wicked is of little worth. The just man's lips nourish many, but fools die for want of sense. It is the Lord's blessing that brings wealth, and no effort can substitute for it. Let us pray. Lord, we ask for the gift of wisdom. Your word is so clear about the difference between wisdom and foolishness. The difference between having a heart open to learn and a heart that, that rebukes correction. Lord God, we ask this especially for our leaders in public office, that they learn wisdom, that they run far from the liar's tongue, that they be people of fewer words, for as our, your word says, in many words there is no lack of sin. Lord, we ask for leaders who will do more than they talk. Better that someone does many good things about which they have spoken little than speaking much of what they promise and doing little. Lord, we ask you for this gift of wisdom for our leaders. And as far as reproof, correction, and rebuke, Lord, we ask that those who represent us in government may learn how to take correction from those they serve, from those who put them into office, from those whose positions they are meant to represent. Help us, Lord. Help our nation. We pray for America. We pray for this gift of wisdom for ourselves and for those in public office. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. So I don't know if you saw, but uh, Biden apparently was surprised upon hearing the price of beef recently. And, well, a poll from the New York Times said that 83% of Americans say that their pay has not kept pace with rising prices under the current Bidenflation, as it's called. 83% of Americans have seen their real wages go down while he has been in office. Now, this is part of a wider picture that is very bad for his popularity and I want to go through a couple of numbers. We're going to go over to the board in a second. And, and then I want to have you see how those numbers then transition into a consideration about what's likely to happen in the midterms. Let's go take a look. So first of all, we talked about this the other day. The latest number is 23 House Democrats retiring, not running, not seeking uh, re-election, the, the Republicans will need only five or maybe just four uh, seats going into the midterms um, to uh, 
uh, gain in order to uh, retake the, uh, the majority. Now, the uh, disapproval rating of um, Joe Biden in December now, okay, has gone up yet again, the highest of his presidency, 56%, and this is according to a uh, CNBC poll, CNBC and Change Research. That's a, t- that's, a, that's a tall number, and it's about 10 points higher than his approval ratings, which are down to 44%. Down from 56% in September, and then back, if you go back to April, I'm sorry, 46, 46 in September. Okay, so it's down from September. It was 51 back in April. So we're going to uh, look in a moment at how this can impact the midterms. But these are are the current numbers that you'll see in various news articles and. Uh, polling data. If you break that down further, you look at the handling of the economy. Okay, so let's put this in a different color. If you're, if you're asking specifically about the economy, the disapproval rate is shoots up to 60%, and that's a six-point decline since September. Um, decline in approval, that is. So uh, it's getting worse also since September. Um, Price of everyday goods, okay, a related theme, of course. The disapproval shoots up to 72%. People are not happy. And um, helping voters with their wallets, well, 66% disapproval. Um, and then we just showed, told you about that New York Times uh, uh, poll. So these numbers are very um, important. When it comes to uh, COVID, how's the president handling that? Disapproval is at 55%. So these are all very, very strong disapproval numbers. Um, and then, of course, there's another issue. And let me show you the, the uh, from about a month ago, Politico, asked the question about the president's uh, fitness for office. And uh, again, just as a, uh, you know, as an issue of what our fellow citizens are thinking, 46% said, yeah, they believe he's mentally fit for office, but 48% disagreed. Mentally fit for office. Now, it, this is a this is a, a a powerful and important thing consideration when you when you think about the people uh, 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 living in the most powerful nation on earth have to have confidence in their leaders' ability to lead. Disagreeing with someone on positions is, is another issue. But this is is this person uh, mentally able to uh, carry out the duties of the office? So now when we look at all this, let's start looking at what history says about the midterm elections. What happens to uh, in Congress to the party that occupies the White House? Particularly when we're talking about the first midterm here after the White House changes hands, okay? So the White House changes hands from Republican to the Democrat, Biden administration comes in. What's likely to happen in 2022 with the midterms? Okay. So since the end of World War II, the president's party has traditionally lost seats in Congress in the midterms. Now, some years are worse than others. And we want to look at a couple of the dynamics there. Not only do we're going to look at two things. They lose popular vote. And then this imperfectly translates because of, you know, congressional boundaries. And of course, this year, a lot of those boundaries are shifting with redistricting. But basically, losing popular vote in, uh, in Congress translates into losing seats in Congress. Okay, it's not a perfect correlation, but it happens. And on the average, okay, of a 7.4% 
drop in the House popular vote. Now, the Democrats won the House popular vote in 2020 by three. So that means if history proves two, it true, Republicans are likely to gain 4.4. This is all averages and so forth. But you can expect in the popular vote for the House of Representatives a good four uh, and a half points uh, gain on the part of the Republicans. Now, what about seats? Okay, usually the president's party, let me make this clear for you, loses an average of 26 seats in the House. All right, we're talking about the House. We'll talk about the Senate in a little bit. But the average, uh, uh, the President's party has lost 26 seats. Now, the Democrats are not going into this election with a huge majority in the House, as you know. We already pointed out four to five seats difference. However, the number of losses of seats that the midterms bring is usually not uh, correlated to the size of their uh, majority. So in other words, the, the pattern of the loss of seats is likely to, to, uh, uh, to hold uh, firm. And in fact, I have a chart to show you. Let's just look at the history of the losses in the House um, over, these, uh, over these years since, uh, well, since 1946. Let's look at this chart of the losses of seats in the House of Representatives. Um, and you'll see that only twice, only twice, you see, you see first of all, the, the long, uh, and of course, blue and red representing the parties, the arrows going there to the left of the screen indicating the numbers of seats lost um, in, by the president's party in the midterm election. So you see, well, going all the way down to the bottom, 1946, Democrats lost 53. 1950, they lost 27. 54, they lost, Republicans lost 16. 58, Republicans lost 47. And on and on it goes. Up until last year, 2018, or last midterm, 2018, um, uh, Republicans losing 40 seats. The only time the president's party gained seats are those two little arrows to the right um, where, uh, uh, where it was in 2002, President Bush. Uh, there was a six-seat gain in the House and um, also in 1998 for the Democrats, a five-seat uh, gain. And those were unusual circumstances in those particular years. Now, in the Senate, things are a little bit... Um, less consistent uh, than uh, in the House. And, 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 you know, it's a different dynamic in the Senate, okay? First of all, every midterm election, you have the entire House of Representatives up for um, election, whether they want to run or not, otherwise it's an open seat. But every it's only a two-year term. And, of course, the frequency of elections and the shortness of the term uh, are ways of keeping them more accountable to us, the voters, the people they, 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 they're supposed to represent. Um, but in the case of the Senate, only one third of the Senate is up for election in any particular midterm election. So you don't have all hundred of them running. Uh, and so first of all, just that fact alone is going to mitigate uh, losses for or gains for one or another uh, party. The other thing is that the senators, because this is a statewide election rather than just in the district, uh, sometimes can overcome the, 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 the ideological winds that are going back and forth. Let's look at another graph that shows the, uh, uh, the Senate seats. And you'll see a little bit more, uh, a few more times in history where uh, the uh, president's party has actually gained Senate seats in the midterms. You see a few uh, uh, there of the arrows that are going to the right. Those were gains, including in um, 
President Trump's first uh, uh, midterms. So he gained two Senate seats. And the dynamic that is that is uh, taking place there uh, very often is that a party is able to uh, flip seats where the president did well in that state during uh, during the general election two years earlier. But otherwise, uh, you basically see the president's party losing also Senate seats uh, again in this pattern since World War II in these midterm um, elections. Okay, um, we're not likely to see in 2022 the House go one way and the Senate go the other. In other words, the Democrats to lose seats in the House, which is highly expected, but gain seats in the Senate. And uh, the, the reason uh, is that the Republicans, first of all, if you look at who won the state in the presidential race, the Republicans only have to defend two uh, Senate seats in, play, in states where Biden won. And that is Pennsylvania and uh, Wisconsin. Um, Biden won by less than two points in those states. So there's not a big momentum uh, for him, especially if, if, of course, you consider uh, the dynamics of the, uh, of the election. Um, the, 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 the Republicans have a number of Senate seats that they could pick up, again, in states where Biden's margin was very, very slim. Fewer than three points, for example, in Arizona, Georgia, and Nevada. Um, so you could have you could have pickups there uh, for the Republicans. Now, what are the reasons for this? Let me just go briefly into uh, again, and I'm thankful to the, um, the great great material. Let me put it up here that you find at Cook Political. You're, you're interested in uh, political analysis. Uh, you can get certain articles here or you can subscribe. And I would recommend if you want to go deep into these things that you subscribe at cookpolitical.com for some really good articles online and you can get email updates as well. So what are the reasons for this midterm phenomenon by, uh, by which we see the president's party lose seats in Congress. Okay, well, first, what, one of the ideas is that the party that won the presidency overperformed and that in the midterms, the voting uh, 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 goes back, recedes, okay, it reverts to what the more average is. Um, and this is called reversion to the mean. It's not completely convincing that this is the reason. In other words, oh, well, we outperformed in the presidential, but now, you know, it's going to kind of go back to, it's like the, the tide coming in, right? Because that doesn't always, that doesn't always prove true. Okay, popular uh, 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 presidents can, 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 can keep up their momentum depending on the level of popularity, which, of course, we saw is not so great right now with... Uh, with Biden. But there's a second reason that it holds a little bit more weight. And that's what, what's called a surge and decline. And uh, may sound like the same thing, but, but the question is, who turns up to vote in the midterm elections? Consistently, Midterm elections have a lower voter turnout, right, than the presidential elections. Presidential elections, people are just, they're coming out more. They're paying more attention. Uh, it's, it's, it's just a more dramatic moment for the country. Uh, lower turnout, uh, first of all. Now, when you consider the mindset of the voter, if the Democrats are, took over the White House, in the last presidential election, voters in which party are likely to be more motivated to come out to vote in the midterms to give a mid-course correction to politics in America? Obviously, the party that is not in the White House. It's just a psychological reality that makes a lot of sense. And that's called differential turnout. The party that's not occupying the White House is going to be more motivated 
to come out and vote. Simple as that. It's called differential turnout. And then finally, there's a third reason, and this is, <laughs> and given all those statistics I shared with you before and some of this latest polling and the surging and the disapproval numbers, this one is going to be very easy to understand. It's what's called the presidential penalty. Part of this is the buyer's remorse. Many people in the midterms switch their vote. The party that they voted for in the presidential uh, election two years earlier, they now vote for the other party. And part of that is, hey, you know what? I'm really disappointed in what this president did or didn't do. Buyer's remorse. And we've seen a lot of Biden buyer remorse, right? You've heard about it. I've heard about it. People, we've talked to people. We see it. We see it surging up in many different ways all across the country. But the presidential penalty, in other words, is a dynamic that's in place anyway. You add to it what's going on in this current cycle, and you can see why uh, Republicans have a great deal of confidence here. Um, and a final consideration, you know, when a voter switches a vote, if you get if you get a person to come out in the midterms that didn't vote at all in the in the presidential election, well, then then you've got a plus one uh, vote. But if you've got somebody who switches votes, not only do they have a vote for the other party, but then you have minus one vote for the uh, previous uh, party they previously voted for, that is the one that's in the White House. And so it's a it's a uh, twice the effect, somebody switching a vote than a new voter coming in to cast a vote. So let's go back to uh, our chair here. Hopefully these uh, notations are helpful to you. But uh, brothers and sisters, let's pray then about these dynamics as we go into, I mean, we're in 2022 now, and as we go into uh, people getting more and more engaged in the election process, more and more uh, tuned into it, uh, primaries are going to begin before you know it, uh, and uh, uh, this is going to be now the next um, 11 months very, very intense in this arena. So, Let's ask the Lord's grace and blessing. Father, send the Holy Spirit upon the voters of America. Lord, we know that many are not just disappointed, but angry at the direction that uh, the country, the economy, our security, our morals, our, our laws and policies, uh, our standing in the world uh, stage uh, have been going. And, uh, and we ask, Lord, that people will not just be frustrated, not just be angry, um, but will take their convictions and translate them under the guidance of your spirit into productive activity by making sure they're registered to vote at the place where they currently live, by making sure that they're educating themselves and their neighbors about the, 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 the direction of the country and the candidates and the policies and the platforms and the programs. Lord, that, that people take an active role. Let's not just be spectators. Uh, send the Spirit to your people and enliven and activate them because we recall the great commission of our Lord Jesus Christ to teach the nations to carry out everything that he has commanded us. And we know, Lord, that we have an opportunity to do that in the elections because if we want good policies, we need to choose good policy makers. Give your people wisdom Give them confidence, but not overconfidence. Help them to understand, Lord God, the historical dynamics that are in play in, in, in these midterm elections. But yet, Lord, let us not rest on the laurels of history or relax because of the dynamics of history, but rather give your people the wisdom to work as hard as they possibly can. Give them the wisdom to understand the dynamics but to work as if the dynamics were not in their favor and strive mightily to lead this nation in the direction we are convinced it should go. Bless your people. And we pray now in the words that Jesus gave us, our Father, who art in heaven, 
hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. So, friends, there is a website, ProLifeVote.com, that I want to invite you to go to. And sign up there. We're going to have online training seminars for making a difference in the elections. We would love to connect with you on those seminars. ProLifeVote.com, right at the top, you'll see where you can sign up. And you'll keep informed about things like this throughout the course of our election season. Again, I recommend to you also Cook Political. Uh, really keep informed in a deep way about these political dynamics. Excellent articles there uh, by many, many political uh, experts. Stay connected with us also on social media. You can reach me at FR Frank Pavone on all the major social media accounts. On Facebook, it's Father Frank Pavone, but otherwise on Getter, on Parler, on Instagram and Twitter and YouTube, I will see you there. And then also Right Side Broadcasting at RSB Network. So let's continue to uh, be involved, stay encouraged, and may the Lord bless you and your families. You'll be in our prayers here at Priests for Life. Spread the word about this program, Praying for America, and join us again tomorrow.